Today we're out in the shop and I had a viewer write a comment that what could I use to cut the slots accurately if I don't have a table saw? Well, several methods to do that. Probably the easiest way is to start out uh, a hub. Start your hub out like a square. This is my favorite Whirly Gig mechanical propeller that, you know, it's pretty big. And I cut the slots with uh, a table saw and I show you how to do that in some of my other videos. If you don't have a table saw, you just have a vise and say a hand saw, you could cut your block square to start with. Plenty of Whirly Gigs have been made with square hubs and they work fine. I mean, it's all in your preference, what your preference is. You know, that's a square hub. With a hand saw, get these accurate cuts by making or buying a miter box. A miter box is a, a three-sided uh, channel type of box that's open-ended. And you can screw it or clamp it to your workbench, right? And then it holds the blade of the saw at whatever angle. Usually they, they come with a 90 and a 45 already cut in, but you could cut the angle in your miter box, which is, you know, this is uh, 35 degrees, I believe. Use that miter box to saw with a hand saw and get very accurately. It'd be easier to do that with a square hub because you can, can clamp the hub to the side of the miter box and hold it very securely while you're, while you're sawing. Very hard to just clamp this in a vise and hold an accurate angle but again if, if you don't if you don't have a miter box and you just let's make a whirly gig right I'm sure hundreds and thousands of whirly gigs have been made with just with just a handsaw clamping your hub in the vise draw an accurate line first because the line helps your eye helps your eye keep it straight and just saw saw your kerf in there saw your slot for the width of your blades to make it easy you know, you know then if you want to you, know, you could round this off. For today, I have another way to get very accurate with a round hub. A viewer sent me a comment. What if I don't have a table saw? So my first, my first comment would be, you know, start with a with a square hub, and I just have a piece of two by four that I've squared up. I'm working on a three blade hub. So my three blade hub is for. The, the wind turbine. I'm going to start this out exactly like I do all the hubs, but I'm not going to cut the slots on a uh, table saw. So just to see how this was, you can see this, this wind turbine. You can make this hub any, any number of blades. I mean, two, three, four, eight, you know. But what I'm going to start with is just a, a line by the way, this method, I believe, is shown in this book, The Art and Craft of Really Good Construction by Gabriel Zuckerman. found this. It does have some patterns and diagrams for various whirly gigs. He shows in here the method I'm going to use, basically, is to clamp the hub here and drill the holes with a drill press. You wouldn't have to use a drill press. You, you could use a hand drill and make the uh, make the hub that way. You can also make uh, little little gears this way. So what I'm going to do is just start with a line. So then I'll take I take a protractor and we're going to make a three blade a three bladed hub. So any circle there's 360 degrees in a circle. So you take 360 and divide it by the number of blades you want. Divided by three blades equals 120. So I need 120 degrees between my blades. In order to line that up accurately, I'm going to draw it on a piece of paper first. So I got, I got it on the line, not on the bottom of the protractor. I have it on the line. So 10, 20, 20, 20. 100, 120. 
So one blade, two blades, and then another 120 degrees. Hold these as accurate as you can get them, because this is the more accurate your blades are, the easier they will spin in the wind. See how I did that? Each one of those is 120. This is just a cheap school supply protractor. And just for fun, just to see what where we're going with this, I'm going to draw a circle in here. This helps me get my hub lined up on here too. Okay, so there's my hub and these are my blades. So now that I have this laid out, we'll go over to the drill press, cut out a hub with the hole saw, then bring it back over here and mark it. So I have a little kit, a little cheap kit of uh, various size hole saws. And there's lots of these, you can buy different ones. This, these are, you can find these at flea markets all the time, cheap. Okay, I have a piece of uh, pine, just three quarter inch pine, tightened up with the chuck. And when I do this, I don't, I don't want to cut into my table here. Uh, besides, leave a mark on your table; it'll dull your, it'll dull your saw. Any kind of scrap underneath there, so I can cut all the way through my material and still not cut into the table. Okay. I'll notice I didn't cut all the way through. Because if you cut all the way through, then your hub goes all the way up in here into the saw hole, and it gets stuck up in there. And these are very hot. It gets hot going through that wood because of the friction. So I go almost through. And then I back it out. And I back it out, flip it over, sits makes a hole, you can center it up on that hole easy, and then cut the rest of the way that's only barely sticking through and it's not hard to get out. See that? Boom. There's my hub. Not bad. Now I'm, take, I'm going to take the hub over here to the drawing table and mark it for the blades. I'm using a, uh, a Sharpie and I recommend uh, a fine edge, a fine line sharpie, because you want you know you want it to be fairly accurate. So I'm lining this up with my circle that I drew, and I want to see the the center in here. And then, I, once I make a line, I got to make sure that that line stays at the same place as I go around. Don't wiggle it. Once you made one line, don't wiggle it. One. Three. Once you've drawn them, go back and check. They all line up. One, two, three. Okay? See that? Now, also, I want to measure this and make sure I'll put a little cross mark on there so I get in the center. 770 is what they measure. Now I'm going to make a little mark here. I want to, when I, I'm going to drill holes in this and when I drill them I want them to be uh, dead center. Here's the hub with the marks. I'm going to try to use a half inch doweling. You can use, I would, wouldn't go much smaller than 3 8 because you need, you want some surface area to glue uh, your blades to. But what we're going to do here is drill holes all the way around, cut three even pieces of the doweling, and then glue the toweling to the blades. Now this is half inch doweling, so most drill sets go up to one half inch. It's a half inch drill. The problem with that is most most hand drills 
won't take a half inch. So when you're getting a half inch bit, get a reduced shank. You see how the, the shank here is reduced in diameter? That's so it can fit in most regular size chucks. Even though uh, this chuck is only up, I think it's only up to three eighths. Now before I go crazy on this, I would recommend drilling a pilot hole first. Is use a, a stub drill or a center drill. These are a little stubby drill bit that won't, it's easier to hold steady and because when you're drilling the drill bit will wander around chase the grain and if you have a stub bit it'll go straight where you aim it well, especially if you use a drill press I'm gonna demonstrate this with hand tools because not everyone has a a table saw and a drill press and a bandsaw these are handy to have and you can pick these up at flea markets now you want to hold the drill as straight as you can Now I have my pilot hole drilled, reduced shank, half inch drill bit. Hard. It's really hard to control uh, with a just a freehand drill press. So here's the dowels. Here's the three holes. One, two, three. And the one went a little off center. Now that center isn't as critical as the index marks went off center on the hub. So that fits pretty good. Got to cut three even pieces to fit in here. So I'm going to judge that by how big my blades are. So I want those about about two inches. I'll put a mark at the two inch from the hub. I want them all to be the same. So there's two inches from the hub. So that gives me the length here of, I'm going to call it three inches. This is, you want to keep these pretty accurate too. You want all the blades to be exactly the same distance from the center of the hub. So get all these the same size. Now we're back over the drill press and the reason uh, I, I'm here is because I want to show you this. If you don't have a drill press, you know, it's hard to really get dead accurate work and it, the one tool you want to get, uh, beg, borrow, steel, flea market and find a drill press. The older ones are usually a little more heavy duty. This little bench top model, I use it for everything. If you're making whirly gigs, a drill press really helps in the accuracy. I have the hub mounted here to a 1-2-3 block. Now these are real handy too. They're guaranteed to be square at 90 and accurate 3 inches by 2 inches by 1 inch. And I use them for setups, I use them for weights, you know, they just use them for everything. And I've got, I'm using it as a square here, or an angle plate, so that the hub is square to the spindle of the drill press. So I've got the half inch drill bit in here. And I even check, I check my line here to make sure that the line is straight. That's it. 
and rotate this to the next index mark. Machinists call that indexing. Surprise, surprise. Tighten the clamp. Make sure everything's squared. Take this half inch line here that I marked. Of course, I'll do this for all three of them. Get this as straight as I can get it. So I want these all to be the same. This one was split, but it doesn't matter because I'm going to cut that part off. Alright, to get this line a little straighter, use a quarter inch drill bit too. Just lay it up against here like this. A nice straight line. And carry that line across the top. I'm just going to cut that with the saw. That's not too good, but it, it will work. So you can see how that flat is going to... I will provide the gluing area. I'll clean that up a little bit with a file or sandpaper. Better to cut off less and then you can take off more later with a sand, sandpaper or file. I cut off too much, but that's how that's going to work. You could take this blade shape it into the shape of a wind turbine propeller or a, you know a flower or a leaf use your imagination so uh, next is to cut these other two let's go ahead and get that done All right, so you can let these dry, and then uh, once they're dry, I will glue them into the hub at the proper angle. Now, I'm going to make a little cardboard jig to get them all at the same angle. Back over here at the drawing table, and I've got a piece of cardboard and a handy uh, protractor. I want to get these at 35 degrees, and I want them all to be the same. So in order to do that, I'm going to going to make a little wedge out of cardboard here. I'm going to start with the, uh, this was a cardboard box so I know these edges are 90. So I'm going to start with that 90 degree edge. Okay. I'm going to come up from that edge. 35 degrees. 10, 20, 30, 5. 
and there's the angle of my blade. that dry. That's where we are so far. Now you might want to put some, you know, pins, dowels through here, strengthen it up. You can make this a lot bigger. Use a bigger dowel and a bigger hub and, you know, you could really do some wacky stuff. That'd be fun. Anyway, Another way to make a hub for your whirligate.